Welcome back guys. Today we are going to start on some base plates for the engine mounts on the K24. But I don't know how far we're going to get because I spent a lot of this morning just staring at the car, trying to wrap my head around some of the problems that I'm facing. A lot of you guys have asked what I think is going to be the most challenging part of this engine swap. And I think I've found my answer. It's simply going to be engine positioning and making it work. In the last episode, we looked at some vertical chassis members that were in the way of the axles reaching from the transmission to the wheel hubs. And what I'm realizing today is that the center line of those axles, even with those vertical members removed, the center line is simply too high. I think I'm going to run into articulation issues with the axles swinging upwards under suspension travel and hitting the upper control arm mounts, the, the horizontal member that is supported by those vertical tubes. Basically, I really need to bring the height of the engine downwards. I could probably do this by just cutting and modifying the oil pan, but if I do that, I'm always going to wonder if that decision is the reason for a failure if I have one in the future. If I have a lubrication or internal oiling issue and it causes an overall failure, I'm never going to know whether or not it was my decision to modify the oil pan that led to it or contributed to it. There's kind of a, it's playing a game. It's a, it's a risky decision when I don't know if the changes I'm making will have a negative effect in the future. I'm not an oiling system expert. What I do know is that dry sump solutions will solve this problem for me, and it's the responsible way to go. Even though it is expensive, it's going to give me confidence as I move forward in knowing that my oiling system will always be up to the task at hand. So I think that's going to be the way to handle the situation and bring the overall height of the engine downwards so that the drive line lines up and sits where it needs to be. So let's take a look. So here's the best way I can explain the issue at hand. This hole back here is the transmission output and this is the vertical chassis member that I mentioned that we have to move last episode. You can see that it's in the way of the axle coming out of the transmission. The problem at hand today though is that this vertical chassis member connects to a horizontal one. You can see it, it holds up the upper control arm. It's, it's this, this, this rail here, if I can get a hand on it. This guy. As you can see, it's pretty much in plane with the axle and I think that once the suspension is articulated to the point where it'll sit once there's just normal weight on the car, and especially once the suspension is articulated under load, that axle is probably going to hit that horizontal member. And if I were to do nothing about how the engine sits, it actually has to go up a bit, because remember, the oil pan is sitting on the chassis, and that can't stay. It's got to move up if I were to mount it with its current configuration. So overall, We've got to solve this. The other thing to mention is I talked about some of these bosses, these provisions, if you will, on the cylinder block that I was going to use for an engine mount. And I forgot, even though I mentioned it earlier, that this intermediate shaft does need to be in place. This makes each axle equal length. It mounts to some of these bosses, which means I could use some of them and build a mount that comes up and around. But I did a little bit of research and realized that a lot of cars use this transmission ear as a mount. It's very stout, it's huge, and they come from this and come down to a chassis rail or something like that. And so we can build an arm that comes off of this and goes down to our chassis down here. And I've even been thinking about adding a chassis member that comes from this point to the same one on the other side because there's nothing that it would interfere with and it will add a lot of rigidity to the back of the chassis and gives me something a bit easier to tie into from this point if I was just coming from here to here. All right, so now we're all on the same page at least and you understand some of the hurdles that I'm facing and the challenges that I've got to overcome. The only downside is I'm not really sure how quickly I can remedy this and it might really slow down the engine mounting process. I think I need to wait until I have the correct oil pan or whatever oil pan I'm going to use in hand and on the engine because if I take any guesses about where the overall height of the engine might be and I miscalculate, I'm going to wind up in a hole I've got to dig myself out of. I don't necessarily have a rush to get this engine mounted so I think I might get some parts on order and we'll revisit really building out engine mounts another time. 
But what we can do is get started on the process. One thing that's not going to change is the parts of the engine mounts that are attached to the engine itself. And this part of the engine mounting process is really going to be the same no matter what kind of engine you're swapping into any kind of car, whether it's a K-series into a Ferrari or a V8 into a 240 or whatever it may be. Whatever you're doing, this is how I would start on it. We have to make plates that bolt to the engine because that's kind of the core of how you attach an engine to a car. So I'm going to show you guys how I would use this piece. I unbolted this from the cylinder head, that three bolt passenger side mount that I showed in the last episode. We're going to use this to start a template and I'll show you guys how I would take this job on. All right, so we're over here at the workbench and I know you don't want to just stare at me while I do this, but I'll quickly tell you what we're doing. I've got some white poster board or use paper, whatever you want. doesn't really matter. A fine point Sharpie, again, whatever your drawing preference. And I've got a machinist scale. And these are really handy because they've got finite measurements on them. And they also have this one in this case is SAE and metric. And the nicest part is you can find these in the like drafting and architecture section of your local like art store. And I think I got these for like 60 cents a piece. They're really cheap and they're great to have around. You don't have to worry about bending them up and stuff. So all we're going to do to start building an engine mount plate is we're going to copy what came off of the car. And if you don't have one of these, whatever your engine may be, there is an alternative and we'll get to that. But in most cases, if you pull an engine out of something, if you're using a donor engine, it's going to have an engine mount on it. And we know in our case that these three bolts line up and mount to the cylinder head. And your mount may go to the engine block or something like that. It doesn't really matter. We know that these holes line up with the block. So all we're going to do is we're going to trace this thing. Now, is this method foolproof? No. Is it glamorous? No. It's also worth noting, I cannot draw anything to save my life, not even stick figures. I am terrible with any form of traditionally artistic output. However, you can see here, what we've got is a reasonably close template of this engine mount. We can see, I added, I don't know if you can tell in the video, I added a bit of a perimeter so I'd have more material to work with once this is cut out of metal. But overall, this is, this is really all there is to it. And it's okay if the holes on your backing plate are a little bit big. There's some wiggle room. It doesn't have to be perfect, bang on. If you want it to be, use that scale. Measure out the holes. Get out a set of calipers and really fine tune this. But this will get you down the road. We're gonna get a little bit more organized than this for the actual mounts on the car. But I wanted to at least show part of the process of how you can do this in a garage with no fancy tools. You can absolutely mount an engine this way, and I have. So let's see this thing on the car. I'll show you guys kind of how this works. Alright, so admittedly that's really quick and exceptionally dirty. That's kind of the, the home garage shade tree mechanic way to make a template like that, but it does work. And the more time you take with it, the better that template will be. I smashed this thing out in a cumulative two minutes, and it's not perfect, but the process is there. You can get an idea of how to actually make this work. I'm going to show you the one other quick and dirty way before we actually do this the correct way because neither of these methods are quite up to the level of how I want this car to turn out. But I at least want to show that doing something like this is possible by anyone with any set of tools. You just have to have some creativity in how to get to the finish line. All right, second dirty way coming up.
So quite literally quick and dirty for this second option. You're using the dirt on your fingers to smudge a transfer onto paper. Kind of like when we took crayons and like drew over leaves in kindergarten. It's the same process. Your dirty fingers will not only crease the edges but highlight them by transferring dirt onto them. And this method is honestly quite accurate as long as you're careful not to move the paper. Riley gave me kind of tips on doing this. It seems pretty obvious, but I was kind of going the first route before he said, hey dude, make it easy. Just do it right on the part itself. And this method is kind of the go-to. It really is accurate. You can take this, cut it out, and make it out of steel pretty easily, or you can scan this and draw it up on the computer just as easily too, without having to measure up the engine itself and take measurements and hope that they're all correct. This right here, this is gonna work. So. Third method, 3D engine scan. Let's try it out. So here we're looking at the 3D CAD model that my buddy Oxer in Australia provided for me. And while I'm sure that there's a lot of cleanup that could be done on this thing, as a lot of this is really out of my wheelhouse, I'm familiar with some of the basic tools in CAD that can help me make some really simple things, in this case, an engine mount. Here we're looking at the bosses on the cylinder head and these are slightly different than mine, but I'm gonna show this for the purpose of illustrating what we're doing here. We can actually use this 3D scan data for a one-to-one -one scale recreation in CAD. Now, this file that I'm working on is not to scale, or rather it is to scale, but it's not one-to-one. -one. So I'm gonna have to change this after I design the part, but that's easier on my end than trying to figure out how to size this model correctly for what I'm doing ahead of time. Like I said, I'm a bit of an amateur. As you can see, the drawing process, once you know the basic tools of this, are pretty simple. And drawing this base plate up really only takes a matter of maybe one or two minutes. I'm gonna draw a handful of circles, connect the tangents of them, and then extrude the layer. And at that point, I've got something that a plasma table or a water jet table can cut out. It really is pretty much that easy. You can see here, a finished base plate. Now, from this, we could draw the rest of a motor mount, and I'm gonna do a quick example of what that could look like using some simple tube, as working with tube is relatively easy even if you don't have a tubing notcher. A flap wheel can cope the ends, and it'd be relatively simple to design a basic bushing engine mount off of this thing. It's simply a matter of drawing one tube coming off, and you'll have to imagine some welds in place. From there, it gets coped to another, and then inside of that tube, we insert a bushing and a steel sleeve. If we zoom out, you can get a pretty quick and easy idea of what an engine mount could look like off of this engine, and it's one that really would work depending on the application. Again, this probably isn't what I'm gonna use, but I wanna at least illustrate part of the process. So obviously doing this with a 3D engine scan is the most complicated, but the most correct way to get this done. There's a lot of ways to do this job with a whole different you know, set of tools, different skill sets, all that kind of stuff. And that's what's important to me is to show that it doesn't take a lot in order to step out of your comfort zone and build something special or wild. I built most of my cars with skills just like this. No computers involved, no fancy tools, this, a grinder, and a MIG welder, and you can build just about anything. So this process is what I'm using to make one engine plate, and obviously there's a few more to make. So hopefully by next episode, I'll show you guys some of the progress there. I'm gonna kind of shortcut some of this and do the rest of it behind the scenes, but now we're all caught up. We can get some engine plates done, and in the next episode, I've got some car disassembly to do. We're gonna be waiting on oil pan parts and things like that. Could take a little bit of time. But more of this car needs to come apart, and there's some more figuring that has to happen. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope at least somebody learned something and is inspired to go out and start tinkering in their garage to build something just as cool. Thank you, as always, for watching, for subscribing, for liking, for commenting. The support means a ton. 
I will catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks again.